come take a look at our mid-century marvel that we've got here. Oh my word. Isn't it great? This is amazing. Open concepts are the rage these days, a concept first made popular in the mid-century. This home is a perfect example. Finished in 1972, this mid-century modern house in Cape Elizabeth has volume to spare. It's what attracted new owner and professional home renovator Laurel LeBove of Sopo Cottage. The whole thing with mid-century is to have, you know, sort of outdoors tied with the interior. So. Certainly they've got wow. the big koi pond here, but then the whole wall of windows over there. And the, the sunlight is key, isn't too. Isn't it great? I mean, isn't it the biggest skylight you've ever seen in a ever. home? It's kind of amazing. America embraced the style like it embraced the TV show, The Brady Bunch. Soaring spaces, open stairwells. Can't you just see the Brady kids on these stairs? Natural materials, and yes, even the Bradys had an indoor garden. To me, the real amazing part of this whole house is this chimney in the mm. fireplace. Um, it's a real wood-burning fireplace. They just brought it in and sat it there. Wow. Um, and it, you know, it's sort of the centerpiece, I think, of the whole first floor. So there's no way you're getting rid of that. No, no. To me, that's what really makes this house. It's audacious, which I think is one of the coolest things of all. It's like a time capsule from the 1970s, which I think is so great. James Schwartz is former president of the board of Maine Preservation and retired vice president of the National Trust for Historic Preservation in Washington, D.C. There are not a lot of houses like this and certainly not a lot of houses on this scale. And you've got this fascination with both geometry and movement. Look at the way the cedar is applied. And the same thing happens when you go on the inside. You've got all these horizontals and verticals and diagonals that are designed to actually carry your eye through the space. You walk in the front doors and there is a vast multi-level space designed for living. Um, that was radical at the time. There's a rolling appreciation in American architecture. So in the early 1900s, people were tired of Victorian. By the 1950s, people didn't like Victorian houses at all. Um, in the 1970s, people didn't like 1950s houses. And suddenly, houses from the early 1970s are both interesting and charming and attractive. And if you open any shelter magazine, it's filled with mid-century modern furnishings and light fixtures, as well as design. So mid-century modern is back in style. I do think this will be a primo party house. <laughs> um, but to have the circular flow is just going to be great. <laughs> and many people tell us this was the party house. How could it not be? Check out the myriad colors of groovy shag carpet. Just like in the Brady Bunch, this house was designed and built by an architect who raised six kids here. That architect, John Leisure, also designed the South Portland Library and Franklin Tower, among other well-known structures in the Portland area. And his kids actually helped build the home. As you can imagine, this quickly became the house where everyone gathered, especially the large family, and especially in the kitchen. Kitchens in the 1970s suddenly became places where families were welcome. Formerly, kitchens were reserved for either servants, if it was a wealthy family, or for the mom. The rest of the family was not invited in there. In the 1970s, kitchens got larger, lots of counter space, lots of space for cookbooks, which people got interested in. The Brady's Kitchen? Avocado green with orange for mica countertops. And yep, we've got the orange, all right. Wow. Orange for mica countertops. For mica. And orange for mica. Burnt orange. That burnt was the color. Orange. That was the, the trendy color in this. And here we are in the kitchen. <laughs> wow. Blue cabinets. Blue cabinets. I mean, it's a wow kind of thing. And where there would normally be a backsplash, a short window instead. Right. Um, and we love the bar. So that's the other part of it. But did you see this telephone behind you? They left this for me. What? I was so excited. I had friends that had one of these when I was growing up, and I wasn't oh, allowed to have something quite this word. fancy. I've never even seen one. Look at this. It's got your princess handset right here. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's got the space back here for your telephone book. Telephone book? Some of you are saying, what's that? But it's staying. Some things that probably won't. The gigantic island light fixture. <laughs> So, yeah, there's just so many things in this house. The corkboard wall. Yes, that's the world's biggest corkboard wall. Um, <laughs> Bathtubs that sink into the floor. 
um, which I think is kind of a cool idea, but I'm not sure I want to lay on my stomach to clean the bathtub. <laughs> so that's something that we're definitely thinking about. And some far out wallpaper. Talk about psychedelic. This actually says mushroom. Mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> over and over, over and, and over, over again. again. This will be the master bedroom. Could you sleep with this on the walls? I'm not sure that the mushroom wallpaper will live forever there, but I think we can for certain keep it in the closet. Because <laughs> is that cool or what? Check out the linoleum design in the massive laundry room. A lot of kids means a lot of laundry. And then push it right back in. I love it. Perfect 70s design. Outside, the house blends into the landscape. Literally. Don't you love this? I love this. The tree this. that grows right through. Right up out of yep. the... Oh, it's all glass looking out here. You really feel kind of like you're in a tree house. I love these lights. That I just think they're awesome. great. Laurel definitely has an eye to 70s design and an appreciation for the house's history. But how to make the 70s current? Laurel's got a plan. I don't know that we'll be slavish to mid-century modern, but I think... You know, we definitely want to have a lot of those kinds of elements that will be in here. So it's not going to be like walking into a museum, but it's definitely going to have that contemporary sort of feel to it.